from Universal Studios Hollywood, the Samuel Goldwyn Company presents American Gladiators. Selected from a nationwide search, 20 men and women have come to Hollywood to challenge our force of American Gladiators for a single honor to become American Gladiators champion. Now, here are your American Gladiators, Gemini, Lace, Nitro, Gold, Laser, Blaze, Thunder, Ice, Turbo, and Diamond. The host for American Gladiators, Mike Adamley and his co-host, Larry Zonka. Welcome to our arena, and this round of the American Gladiators, the semifinals, are underway. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Animley, along with one of the great names in pro football history, number 39 from the Miami Dolphins, Mr. Larry Zonka. Hi, Mike. Good to be here. <laughs> Larry, in terms of intensity, in terms of emotion, in terms of what's at stake here in the semifinals, this draws parallels, at least to me anyway, of the NFL playoffs. Fair analogy? Certainly, a couple of old pros remember when the playoffs where there was a lot of money involved. It was a lifestyle. I think now that we're into the finals and the, and the money's on the line, that you're going to see the competitors under the heat. And not just the competitors, also the gladiators. I think they'll react to it. So we're looking forward to a very fine exhibition of sporting talent today. Okay, with that in mind, let's meet the contenders for this semifinal matchup. In our women's semifinal, please welcome back Margaret McCargo of East Orange, New Jersey a communications major at Upsala College. And her opponent, Trish Tillotson of Wichita, Kansas, a teacher. In the men's competition, here's Rico Costantino, a bodyguard from Santa Ana, California. And his opponent, Lincoln Simons of Studio City, California, a stuntman. Trish, you told me earlier that you have learned a lot about yourself and you learned a lot about overcoming fear since your performances so far in American Gladiators. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, coming into this uh, contest, I had a fear of heights and just about everything we do is up high. So I've had to overcome that and it's been a challenge, but it's been real good. Lincoln, you have taken a beating and you're still competing. Well, it's been tough, but uh, I've been licking my wounds and I'm ready to come back and Go at it again. You're licking your wounds and nitro and lasers over there licking their chops. They're ready for you. Larry? Margaret, you're tiny in stature, kind of quiet when you compete, really kind of laid back, but you always score points. Now, I was looking at a little historical data we have on you that you, uh, you like to ride a motorcycle in your time off, and you also like to take care of your parakeet named Tweety. Those are two hobbies that don't necessarily seem to go together. Well, that's kind of true. Well, riding a bike, you need to uh, keep your eye open because where I'm from, they don't really care about the motorcyclists. They'll just hit you. So you got to keep your eye open. And while I'm out here, I got to keep my eye open because the gladiators hit you just like the car. And as far as the uh, bird, I wish I had his nature flying up that wall. <laughs> Is he a killer parakeet? No, he's a nice one, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with that wall today. Rico, you're an audience favorite, obviously. They've nicknamed you Rocky. Uh, You've had a couple of go-arounds with the assault. I asked you earlier before the show about which event you were really concerned about, and you said the assault had captured your, uh, your attention, really. Yeah, it's this, this event I like the most, and I've been blanked twice, so I've done the least in it. Have you changed your strategy at all? I know you've got pretty close to the cannon in the last couple of competitions, but uh, what are you going to do differently today? I think I'll spend a little more time on the crossbow and the rocket launcher. The farther away, i got a better chance. Yeah, you don't like to be too close to that cannon with those tennis balls coming at 104 miles an hour. Good luck to both of you, Mike. Well, gladiators, stay hungry. Contenders, stay healthy. Let the games begin. <laughs> this is how our competition works on the American gladiators. Our contenders, two men and two women, will compete against the American gladiators in seven very different events. Now the contender who amasses the most points in those seven confrontation automatically advances to the championship final. At stake, over $150,000 in cash and prizes. We are ready now for our first event. It's the game of hit or be hit, men's assault. Here's Zonk with an explanation. In assault, contenders have 60 seconds to hit a target above the gladiator. Using first a crossbow, then a rocket launcher, 
a cannon, a pistol, and a final attempt with three softballs. Four points can also be earned if a contender can cross the finish line without being hit. And handling the shooting duties for the Gladiators in this first event, the game of assault is Thunder. Enrico Costantino is up first in this men's semifinal. He's advanced thus far with wins over John Adams and Nate Foster and is the men's top seed in this semifinal round. But he has had troubles in the past in this event, Larry. He commented earlier that he was going to take a little more time with each one of the weapons and concentrate on hitting the target a little more. He took a little more time, but he wasn't much closer than, than the last effort. Still plenty fleet of foot to avoid those tennis balls. Rico setting down low, his shot a little low there. Whoa! Still with a good bit of time on the clock to get the job done. The red portion of that target you see was seven points, a bullseye would be worth 10. Now time is a factor for Rico Costantino. Almost definitely he's gonna have to hit Thunder here. Last chance. And he falls just short of the finish line. Time expires, so he doesn't earn the four points for the draw. Rico, we talked about it. You're over two coming into this thing, and you said one way or the other, Zonk, I'm gonna get through this assault. And you almost made it. You were just two seconds short of making it through the gates and getting some points. Well, I thought third time would be a charm, but it's gonna have to be four. <laughs> I thought really with the bazooka, as long as you took, you had the crosshairs on the on the target, but just fell a little short. Yeah, I guess as James Cagney said, ooh, you dirty rat. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck the rest of the day. You see why he has such audience appeal. Rockin' Rocco Rico, here we go. Hello, Rico ought to work on his Jimmy Cagney impersonation a little bit more. All right, next up is Lincoln Simons. He's got a golden opportunity to take the early lead here if he's successful against Thunder. Lincoln, a veteran stuntman of 11 years, advanced to the semis with wins over Dwayne Thomas and Dale Thompson, a native of Studio City, California. Ready? Again, 60 seconds each contender has to get the job done. Lincoln not quite sure what technique to use. He was very quick, and he's using up a lot of time back here, taking time getting his weapon situated and just set on his shoulder correctly, and it uh, may cost him at the end of the competition. Shot with the rocket launcher, just low underneath the target. There he goes. Oh. He got it. Seven points for Lincoln Simons. You got it. You hit the edge of the target. Got seven points out of the deal. Thanks, Larry. I just, uh, I just aim and just hoping to hit anything, and it did. <laughs> just sending out a flurry out there. I noticed that Thunder was sending out a flurry at you with tennis balls going everywhere. Yeah, he was. Uh, I was hoping my shot would hit before he'd hit me, though. Hang in there. Good job. So the stuntman takes the early lead in this men's semifinal round, but there's a lot of action left, including the joust. And to climb up the wall. And up next, it's the women's turn to take aim in assault. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where the women are set for assault. And in this event, our contenders will face the firepower of Blades. In our women's semifinals, Margaret McCargo enters as the women's top seed with wins over Susan Hurst and Kelly Peacock. A softball and basketball player at Uppsala, Margaret always comes prepared for competition. <laughs> as evidenced by the addition of her footwear. You could say she's hoping for a Kawabunga run in the assault. Margaret not successful with the crossbow, now we'll try her hand with the rocket launcher. <laughs> Accidentally pulling the trigger there. Still plenty of time, however. Boy, she just flipped her hand out, touched the trigger on the cannon, and was able to get the job done against Blaze. The 
Dirty rat, Margaret. <laughs> Margaret, I know you've been concerned about this particular event. Some of the preliminary rounds, you, you didn't score points one occasion, the other occasion you made it through the gate and got a few points, but obviously you've been studying your accuracy with the weapons a little bit. No, I was just trying to get to the softballs, really, because I play softball, so I figured if I get there, they would help me out, but I got to something else before I can get to the softball, so I'll take that. Well, hang in there. Good luck the rest of the day. So Margaret picks up seven points, and now it's Trish Tillotson's turn to see what she can do against plays. Trish was the women's fourth seed coming here into the semis. She did so by defeating Sheila Mercer twice, both in the prelims and the quarterfinals. And Blaze is ready to go. And judging by the look in Trish's eyes, she's ready to go too, Mike. Five foot eight, 145 pounds, 31 years old, but she moves like a person a good deal younger in the assault. She's on her way. is laying out a steady stream of tennis balls. <laughs> Trish says, I've had enough of that. I'm just going to hit you. Forget the target. And Larry, they say that lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Well, that was the same safe zone that Trish was hit in the semifinals, although a different part of her body is Blaze checking out her hand after Trish hit that. Well, Mike, obviously she had some sore fingers as we look at the replay. Here, Trish, let's fly with a rocket. You're going to see the bomb go in and catch Blaze on the left hand but she regains her composure in time to compete. And that leaves us with Margaret taking an early lead over Trish after this one event. While in the men's competition, Lincoln holds a 7-0 edge over Rico as the men take to the jousting platform. And Lincoln Simons is up first, and he told us about trying to prove his athletic merit as a stuntman. You gotta work harder when you get older, and uh, that's one of the reasons I'm here. I just wanna, I'm always trying to prove things to myself. And I've been also a, like a frustrated athlete in my day because I always wanted to go farther than what I did. Instead, I, I took off to the studio business. Well, Lincoln's going to have an opportunity to vent his frustrations and show his I'm athletic guys. powers against Gemini here in the joust. Lincoln one and two in previous jousts. He's going against one of the best in Gemini who's got him yeah. off balance, down on his knees. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Takes a couple of swings, loses his stick, and uh, sayonara, Lincoln Simon. Well, Lincoln was doing all right. He's holding his own for a little while, but in the replay, you're going to see two terrific blows that literally flatten Lincoln and send him off the platform. And no need for me to tell you who's up next. You can just listen to the crowd and know that this man, well, this is one of his best events, Rico Costantino. He is 2-0 in the joust. But he draws Gemini On again, guard. and they have a real grudge match going. Gemini comes right off the mark, scoring some blows to the head of Rico. But Rico answering. I don't think Gemini's ever faced a barrage of blows like this before. You can see Rico's girlfriend urging him on. It might have helped, because Rico has got the job done. Gemini goes down. In this corner, weighing 210 pounds, the brand new heavyweight champion of the world, Rico Constantino. That was fun to watch. Had you ever met Gemini before? Uh, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, in this event, in the prelims no, of the quarter. No, the first time. Because he's the baddest dude on the planet. I call him the magic man. The Ayatollah of Smackola. You, only, you, you were doing the smacking. Well, to stay low, bob and move, because I saw what he's going to do. He swings and swings hard. You absorbed the blows, and you also dealt out a lot of punishment. Well, well it's the game. That's the game. Yeah, it's more than the game for you, it is oh, it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a cause. Well done, Rico Constantino. Jim and I, uh, you nearly had him early on. The lad took some punishment, but he did recoup. Yeah, he did. I never did stand under control for any uh, long period of time. A couple times there I was under control, but he did a good job keeping his stick active and won the match. 
Well, it's nice to hear you give him credit. He was. He was a tiger out there. And I believe that's the first time that you've ever uh, not had to get down after the match. Yeah, that's true. But, but that's what we want. We want contenders on there who can fight, who can stand up to the gladiators. It makes the entertainment element for the fans that much, that much better. We don't want to have to dominate everybody. We want people to come out here with heart. Rico has heart. He showed it then. My hat's off to him. It's fun watching, too, Gemini. Thank you. Yeah. Nice display of sportsmanship by Gemini, and with his victory in the joust, Rico takes the lead after two events. The women are up next, and Trish Tillotson, a former marathon runner, explained the parallels between long distance running and a competition here in the American Gladiators. The drive and just the continual effort is real similar to when I ran the marathon, because this is done over a period of times. So you have to win the preliminaries, the quarterfinals, the semifinals, the finals. So it is an endurance event, just like the marathon is an endurance event. So you have to stay mentally sustained. And now Trish faces off against Diamond in the joust. These two have met twice before with okay. Trish coming out the winner. Trish hoping this bout is not a marathon. She'd like to get the job done early. Almost sent herself flying. Well, Diamond got her pugil stick locked on Trish, and Trish used it as leverage. Set her down. Trish almost takes Diamond's head off with a one-two combo up top, and then she pushes Diamond off before falling off herself. So Trish picks up 10 points, and now it's Margaret McCargo's turn. She is one and one in this event. She defeated Blaze in the quarterfinals. Now she, like Trish, draws Diamond. Usually quiet, Margaret's not taking a back seat. She got off to a roaring start. Now a couple of cross checks. Diamond got a little frustrated, a little antsy, and jumps over to Margaret's pedestal. So that will disqualify Diamond. Just like Trish, Margaret gets the better of Diamond. A couple of blows up top, and then Diamond steps over. So after two events, Margaret holds a seven-point lead over Trish. Still to come on American Gladiators, the human cannonball. And our game of atmosphere, but up next, it's the wall. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where we're getting ready for our next event, the men's wall. Mike Adamley's up at the top of the 32-foot wall. How tough does it look from up there, Mike? Well, Larry, it's not Mount Everest, but it is impressive. As a matter of fact, in the semi-final round, we've done something a little bit differently. We have forced the contenders to take a much tougher, more difficult route up the face of the wall, which means that the contender must encounter some very, very acute angles, and that means the forces of gravity will come into even greater play. This is the one event. The contender hopes that Sir Isaac Newton was only partly right. What goes up must come down, but not right away. <laughs> the men are up first with Rico leading Lincoln after two events. Lincoln will be trailed up the wall by Nitro, while his opponent, Rico, will be followed up the wall by Laser. Rico's looking very serious. You see Laser looking on, giving a wink to the camera. Laser's very comfortable with this event. This is his best, and he'd like nothing more than to pull Rico off the wall. Rico in the red, Lincoln Simons in the blue. Once again, both contenders afforded a 10-second head start. Nitro going right after Lincoln, just takes a long jump, gets a hold of Lincoln by the ankles and pulls him off. And now Rico's feeling the heat. Rico takes an inside line up the face of the wall. Laser is right there, but loses his grip. And Rico makes it to the top. And we got a happy rocking Rico. Mike. Rico, this edition of the wall was supposed to be more difficult, not easier. You flew up here 31 seconds, and that's all done with the toughest gladiator of, of them all, Laser, doing it to you, chasing you. He was right on my heels. I felt him nipping. Boy, he was right there. He was psyched for this one. I had to get really psyched. At one point in the wall, he did have me. Had me by the right ankle, and uh, I lifted my foot up and then put it on a, on a, a grip and then just said, that's it, I got to go. Natural instinct and a lot of upper body strength and some great hand strength. Rico, nicely done, 10 points. And a smile on Rico. 
His victory opens his lead over Lincoln to a count of 20 to seven. Margaret leads Trish by seven coming into the women's wall event where Margaret will have the ever confident Lace coming up the wall behind her. While Trish, her competitor, will feel the footsteps of gold. And the summit of this 32-foot wall is not unfamiliar Man. territory for our two contenders. They have both made it to the top in previous rounds. Now they'll try to do it again. And 10 seconds have gone by, and here come the gladiators. Lace wasting no time closing that gap between herself and Margaret as she grabs a hold of Margaret by the shoe but slips off. There's the view from Gold's helmet cam. She had a hold of Trish's foot there momentarily, but she went off the wall. And now it looks like Margaret's gonna go, and there she does. Nice job by Lace. Free run now for Trish. Trish left all alone on the wall. All she has to do is maintain her concentration and her balance and take the points. <sighs> And she does. Go ahead, go ahead and say it. Thank goodness it's over. Hallelujah, it's over. Yay! <laughs> 50 seconds to the top, and for a woman who once had a, a fear of heights, you're not bad in this event, Trish. That's because I didn't look down. <laughs> I just tried to keep looking up. <laughs> and it got me to the top, but it was neat. It's fun, I like this event. I might have to go climb a mountain. <laughs> Not just yet, wait until the semifinals are over, Trish. Congratulations, Trish Tillotson. And with her win over Margaret in the wall, Trish now takes her first lead in this semifinal after three events. In the men's competition, Rico leads Lincoln as we now move to Human Cannonball. And Larry, the object in this event is to knock those gladiators off their pedestals. Each contender is given two swings. Each successful attempt worth five points. Rico will be trying to knock off Thunder, while Turbo will be trying Ray. to hold his ground against Lincoln Simons. Oh. Oh. Turbo, like a rock up there, the same cannot be said for Thunder. As you get the view from Rico's helmet cam, he comes in, smacks into Thunder. Thunder looks like he's going to make it, and then steps off the edge. Many events here in American Gladiators focus on the individual, but as Rico explains, his efforts involve many. I can't take full credit for all this on my own. I've had a lot of supporters, my family, my brother, my girlfriend, have uh, been behind me 110%, you know, and whether I get blanked in the event, whether I do good in the event, it's, they're always right there for me. Rico with a serious look in his eyes, getting ready to take on Turbo as Lincoln prepares to go up against Ready? Thunder. Well, the tables are turned that time around. Thunder stays up, but Turbo goes down. At 210 pounds, Rico able to generate a lot of power. Next time, next time. And at Turbo's defense, he's nursing a sore knee, but that wasn't the reason he went off here. Just too much force by Rico. So Rico earns another perfect score in Human Cannonball and now runs his lead over Lincoln to a count of 30 to 7 after four events. Still to come on American Gladiators is our game of Atmosphere, Powerball, and when we come back, Women's Cannonball. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood where Trish leads Margaret in our women's semi-final. Let's listen as referee Larry Thompson goes over right. some of the human cannonball ground rules. Bent, your feet back, tuck up like this, hold on tight to the rope. Don't lead with your helmets, okay? Take a good swing and see if you can take them down. As our two contenders get some pointers from our referee, Larry Thompson. There we have our two gladiators, Blaze and Ice, getting ready to take on our two contenders. Earlier, Margaret told us her impressions of being the youngest contender on American Gladiators. Everybody seems to have accomplished a lot of things, and here I am, I'm still in school, and I'm not really working, and everybody's working out and done a lot of things in their life, and I really haven't done anything. I'm just starting off. Margaret, just 21 years old. Don't worry, honey, you'll be a success. Her mission right now, to knock ice Ready? from her perch. Trish will be going against Blaze. Oh, a double whammy. 
Both Isa and Blaze blown off the platform. And our gladiators definitely not in an enviable position up there. Even though they weigh more than the contenders, if they are hit flush, they have absolutely no chance. Ice found out there. And watch Trish slam into Blaze. All Blaze can do is grit her teeth and hope she can stand her ground. Nothing doing. Second swing coming up. This time, Trish will try to knock off Ice, and Margaret gets Blaze. Ready? Almost an instant replay of what happened moments ago as both our contenders are successful at knocking the gladiators off. And here you see it on our split screen review. Margaret knocking Blaze off and Trish turning ice upside down. The first one that hit me, there's lipstick on a pad. <laughs> and when it came in, <laughs> Human cannibal, hard on the body and the makeup. So Trish continues to lead Margaret by three points after four events. And Rico leads Lincoln after four in our men's competition. Larry? Now the stage is set for our next event, Atlas Fair, where two contenders compete simultaneously in an attempt to score in one of four pods worth three points each. In the meantime, two gladiators defend by trying to knock the contenders out in spheres of their own. A real game of shake, rattle, and roll. The contenders will try to shake away from the gladiators. The gladiators will try to rattle their Atlas Fears, and the contenders will try to roll their Atlas Fears into those scoring pods for points. Gemini, who calls this event the Rage in the Cage, gets inside of his atmosphere, as does his sidekick, Laser. Rico has done well in this event in the past. We'll try to do the same here in the semifinals. He's pumped up, as always. Ready, red. Ready, blue. Gladiators, ready. <laughs> Referee Larry Thompson gets the match underway. Again, the contenders have 60 seconds to try to roll those spheres into their scoring pods. And there's a score right off the bat by Rico, Costantino. Lincoln does the same. We're all even. Lincoln's really got it rolling now. Lincoln came free and managed to score, but now he's got Tim and I on his tail. And we see Rico and Laser going down the other end of the field. Gemini, normally a very stingy defender, but Lincoln Simons is having a field day. There's Rico, however, scoring to get back in the match. Lincoln getting a little boost by Gemini to roll into the scoring pod. He's having a great run. Remember, he trailed by 23 points coming into this event, so he has definitely made up some ground. The event comes to a close, and you can see that Rico's put his all into the competition. Right? Stuntmen, in addition to being courageous, they're also great problem solvers. You put a stuntman inside of this cage, you'll figure out one of two things. One, how to get out of here, and the other is how to score. And Lincoln, I think you set some kind of American gladiator record in atmosphere. Four goals worth 12 points. You had this thing humming, baby. All right. I was just looking for light. I saw these guys running around, and I was just looking for every break I could get. Anything. At this point, does anything ache on your body? Everything. <laughs> but I'm still going to continue. Oh, absolutely. You're still in the hunt, babe. Nice job by Lincoln Simons. Jim and I, as I alluded to before, a lot of hooting and hollering. You intimidated them a little bit. And then there was a lot of steel crashing. Yeah, there's a lot of clang and a lot of bashing, but the contenders are getting better at it now, Larry. They know how to try to control their momentum a little bit. They're controlling that a little better, so when we have the collisions, we got to start making adjustments like they've made the adjustments. When they slow down, we got to go in barreling in full bore to knock them past the pod, because if not, we'll, we'll knock them into the pod. You like to go full bore in this atmosphere, don't you? Oh, yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, that the, the adrenaline, when you know you're going to have a big collision, is there, man. It's great. There's nothing better than a big, massive collision, and the fans love it. They like that crack. The fans do love it. Jim and I, you're a sick puppy, I'll tell you. Lincoln does make up some ground in Atlas Fear and now cuts into Rico's margin. Cuts it to 17 after five events. The women are now ready, and it's a close battle between Trish and Margaret in their semifinal. You see Diamond loading up in her vehicle, and Gold in the other. Our two gladiators are ready. There's Trish from Wichita, Kansas, the Kansas Comet. Been doing very well. Margaret McCargo buttoning up her helmet. 
Ready, blue. Gladiators, ready. Spotters, ready. Again, those plumes of white smoke are to indicate that the contenders have scored. Trish Tillotson settling in first. Now Margaret does the same. Margaret having a little trouble trying to get that atmosphere out of the scoring pod. She seems to be stuck all on her own. Trish, however, has got it moving and heading down the court. She's got the breakaway. Can the gladiator knock her out of there? Uh-uh. Or Margaret still stuck there in the pod, having a little trouble getting that Atlas Fair out. Gotta rock that baby back and forth, Larry. Trish not having any problem at all rocking hers back and forth. As a matter of fact, she's a broken field, open field runner here. She puts it in for her last score, I believe, as time closes out. And Trish takes a commanding 9-3 victory. Come on, Trish, tell the truth. You actually own an atmosphere, don't you? I mean, nobody can do as well as you do in this event and not have privy to one of these things in their own garage. I wish I did. I love these things. I'm going to try and get one at home, though. <laughs> I get the feeling that you'd like another 60 seconds. <laughs> I would. I'd love it. <laughs> All right, you heard her, guys. Lock her up again. She's going back in for another 60. Congratulations, Trish. And a victory by Trish in atmosphere gives her some insurance points against Margaret after five events. But this semifinal is far from over. The Eliminator is still to come, and Powerball is up next. Here at Universal Studios Hollywood, Rico Costantino leads Lincoln Simons in their semifinal match as our contenders prepare to challenge Thunder, Nitro, and Gemini in our game of Powerball. 45 seconds of nonstop action. Contenders are ready, and so are the Gladiators. Ready? The match is underway, and Nitro with the early wake-up call to Rico Costantino. Referee Larry Thompson warning Nitro about blows above the head. But nice move there by Lincoln Simons, using his quicks. And now a great move, past Thunder to score again. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Nitro reaches up high on Lincoln, literally grabs him by the face as you see the Gladiators paying a little extra attention to Rico. Lincoln the beneficiary of that double teaming on Rico. Rico has yet to score and Lincoln's piling up the points. Whoa! That is it! Gladiators congratulating themselves. They pitched half a shutout. 8 0 the final. Lincoln over Rico. Larry? Gemini and Thunder. On one occasion, I saw Rico grab a ball, a scoring ball, and he couldn't get away from the, either one of you. You were shoulder to shoulder, so he put his head down and started to go between you two, and it didn't work. That's what they call the meat grinder, Larry, and he got ground. One of your contact in this game. Thank you, gentlemen. And with the eight points in Powerball, Lincoln chips away a little more at Rico's lead. Now only trails Rico by nine points after six events. Trish leads Margaret by the same margin as they go to the arena floor to go up against the fearsome threesome of Blaze, Lace, and Ice. There they are. Thumbs up, babe. OK, I got the blue. You heard Ice. I got the blue. That means Trish Tillotson. Does that mean the other two get the red, Margaret McCargo? Ready? That's not fair. Double team action. Ice latching on to Trish right off the bat, driving the shoulder into her and body slamming her. There's Margaret with the quick feet. I'll tell you, you do not want to go one on one against Ice. Margaret fakes herself out there. Trish getting double teamed by Blaze and Lace. <laughs> Margaret with a jump shot. That won't go. 
Ice is manhandling Trish. Just flips her around like a rag doll. And for that matter, Margaret, too. No score. Yeah. Gladiators are getting tough here at the end, and that's it. 45 seconds has expired. The victory goes to Margaret McCargo. Very physical match. I've got to tell you something. Our lady gladiators kind of exchange personalities in this thing. I'll start with you, Ice. You were the KG Tigress that were moving all over the court, knocking people around. You know, I love this game, and I'm going to really, really be sad when this is over. I'm going to have to get all my friends together, and we're going to have to play Powerball. <laughs> Call me. I'd like to get on. Because this is great. You know, I love this. And my teammates were fabulous in this one. There was some movement going on. Lace. Usually the gal that's up front playing the KG1, you were doing a little goaltending. Oh, it was a beautiful thing, Larry. I was loving it, too. Now you're playing with power. power. And finally, the gal that usually uses all technique, very seldom gets into the body slam, you were Miss Body Slam in this competition. You were picking, picking people up and laying them down. Well, Larry, this is one of my better games, and I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm happy. Well, you all look great. You look sensational doing it. And I'll tell you what, we're very appreciative of a great competition. More of American Gladiators right after this message. And with her 6-2 victory, Margaret closes in on Trish after six events. One final event to come. Stay with us. The Eliminator is next. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood for our final event, The Eliminator. My both contenders start at the treadmill and must run against the belts in an effort to reach the top. Once there, each contender must cross a 30-foot span by means of a specially designed hand bike. Then across the balance beam, where gladiators throw weighted blocking pads at the contenders. Here, Larry, the fun really begins. The contenders must scale a 20-foot cargo net. And then it's on to a zip line, a wild, breezy ride across the entire length of the arena floor. From there, it's a straightaway where the contenders will have to make like Edwin Moses, negotiating a set of hurdles. And then a big choice to make, which lane to take. Behind three of these doors are American gladiators all bound and determined to stop the contenders from crossing the finish line. Coming into this event, Trish leads Margaret by five points, meaning that Margaret would need to win this eliminator clean by at least 2.5 seconds. Each contender must finish the eliminator in 75 seconds or less. Each second under 75 is worth two points with five point deductions along the way the line, for falling off any of the Ladies. obstacles. Trish in the blue, Margaret in the red. There they go. Margaret the first up the ramp, the first to reach the hand bike. Margaret doing a great job of finessing her way across. Trish is hung up a bit. Whoa! Oh, Margaret takes a hit from the blocking bag, knocks her clear off the beam. Trish is closing the gap now. Let's see how she does. She makes it through clean. Margaret still isn't up on the deck. Here she comes, right behind Trish. Now drawing just about even. But Mike, she still has that five point penalty for the balance beam to deal with. Which means now that Margaret needs to win by 7.5 seconds. She has a lead, but is it big enough? Down the straightaway they come. Margaret crawling across the finish line. Trish blowing through the finish line right behind her. What a great job by Margaret winning the race, but unfortunately losing the war. And here's why. As she comes across the balance beam, she takes a great hit and loses points right there. With two athletes as skilled and as expert as Margaret and Trish, it's a shame that someone has to go home but there can be only one winner, only one person advancing to the championship final. Margaret, your undoing, unfortunately, was getting knocked off that balance beam. That resulted in the penalty points and uh, kind of killed your chances. Well, it was tough, man. I couldn't get back up there. I had enough time, but I just couldn't get up. You were great. You were a lot of fun to watch. We're going to miss you. You'll be back. 21 years old, you have a bright future ahead of you, Margaret, as an athlete and as a person. Well, your dad said, think like a tiger, fight like a tiger, and, and fight you did. Uh, I think you were aware early on in the Eliminator that uh, Margaret was on her way to taking the best of you. Yes, yeah, she was. I uh, got stuck in the middle of the bike and picked it up and then got across the beam when she didn't, and I just 
feel real blessed because she's a heck of a competitor. Trish, enjoy the moment. We enjoyed your performance. One last big dream to fulfill, and that's the championship finals. That's where you're going. Trish Tillotson. A great performance by both our ladies as Trish Tillotson advances on. Rico leads Lincoln by nine points after six events, a margin of only four and a half seconds for Lincoln to make up in order to advance. Yeah, that's Rico's brother, Tony. Larry, I tell you, Rico may be part ham, but he is all athlete. By way of comparison, in previous rounds, Lincoln has finished the Eliminator in an average of 45 seconds, Rico an average of 41. Look at Rico, actually both men whip across on those hand bikes. Oh! oh. <laughs> both get a terrific blow coming across the balance beam. Pretty much neck and neck, Rico a little bit ahead on the cargo net. Completely throwing caution to the wind. Not to mention their bodies. Rico on the zip line first, here comes the stuntman. <laughs> This will be decided by the Gladiators at the end. Rico gets lucky, nobody behind his door. Here comes Lincoln diving low. Thunder trying to hang him up and does. So it's Rico who advanced to the finals. I gotta say to both of you, it's been just fascinating to watch the two of you. Lincoln. It appeared coming off the balance beam, he had a little problem with the cargo netting. Yeah, I got caught up in the cargo netting. But that's the way it goes. You know, got a little stuck, but uh, I, you know, what can I say? He had a lead on me. I was just trying to catch up. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for Lincoln? Here we go. You have, I think, in a word, tunnel vision. You have the ability to really concentrate on each event as it comes along. One event at a time and just put your mind in and focus. And it's been very strong for me. It's helped out. I'm telling you, we're delighted having watched you all day. Oh, Here's your... I knew you should do it. <laughs> he worked very hard for this. He deserves it. Here's one of Rigo's better looking fans that's come down to uh, congratulate him. Here's my brother. He's helped psych me up for this event. That's him, Tony. As you can see, we've had a family effort, if not a group effort, and Rico's lived up to the challenge. Good luck in the future. Thank you. And congratulations on being in the final. And so Rico and company move on. So congratulations to our winners, and here's a preview of some of the action you'll be seeing in next week's semifinal round. Next week, the semifinals continue as four contenders take another step toward becoming American Gladiators champion. Cinda Metzer, Chris Bovatek, Maria Nicktein, John Adams. Watch as they take on Gold, Laser, Diamond, Turbo, and the rest of the American Gladiators. <laughs>